Hello again everyone and welcome back to my workshop. I had a request from Neil who wants to be able to use a single push button to start a timer, stop the timer and a long press of that same button to reset the timer. Now, the problem there of course is that if you're using it to reset the timer it's going to start it, stop it or mess it up somehow. And also the built-in software does not allow you to do a long press of the button to reset it. The, the idea being that you would come down here in your timer, choose your reset button, uh, and then choose long reset. But that's not what reset type does. Uh, short reset means it will reset the timer when you switch the transmitter off and on, and long reset means it won't. It doesn't mean that whatever you set here needs a long press to reset it. And even if it did anyway, as I said, you'd have the problem of using the same button to do all three things. Can this be done? Yes, it can, with the addition of uh, one of Dave McQueenie's lovely Lua apps, the Short Press, Long Press Switch app. Uh, there's two snags to this. One is that that app will not work with the Generation 1, 16 and 14. Uh, in other words, if you don't have the colour screen, unfortunately, you cannot run the app. It, it's quite resource hungry just at the start. And the other minor snag is that in order to determine whether you've pressed a short press, one or two or three, or a long press, of course, there is a slight pause after your one short press, whilst the app waits to see if you're pressing the switch again. Uh, so there is a, a very short delay between starting and stopping the timer. Anyway, let's have a look at how it can all be done. Um, so we'll go to the switch. The switch I'll set to logic switch one, and then we'll go off and set logic switch one. Say okay to that for the moment. And the obvious thing to do would be that logic switch one will enable it. Uh, I don't have a push button, but I do have a spring loaded switch, so it acts the same thing. And so we could say that spring loaded switch there same thing again so I'm just pressing the button in effect and then you'd use the condition of A on B off and that will set your timer working each time and stopping so if I press the button the timer starts press the button the timer stops it starts it stops okay however now we have this problem. How do we introduce a long press of that to uh, reset the timer back to zero? And that's where the app will come in. What you need is a user app, which is DFM SWT. Naturally, I have a video about this from some time ago. Uh, at the end of this video, in the top left of the screen, I will put a link to that video. Uh, but in the comments below this video, uh, not the comments, sorry, my description, I will also put the link for you to paste into the app sources of Jetty Studio. And if you do that, then you can pick up the app from Jetty Studio. It's a lovely app. Uh, it's actually the app I use most of all. I use it in virtually every model I've got. And in those models that have it, I will use it several times a flight. What can it do? Uh, we set a switch, in this case spring-loaded switch, but we'll treat it like the, the button. And you can then get it to read out one short press. It will read out something. Two short presses. It'll read out something else. Three short presses something else and a long press whatever so I set it to things like one short press would give me my height two short presses my capacity used three short presses you know, speed or whatever it varies a little bit depending on whether it really it's a power model or a, a more primarily a glider I'm flying but it's I find it very handy however as well as just reading out um, some telemetry function we can set it to actually be a function and we'll do that for the long press as well, set it to be a function. Now we can take those and use them elsewhere, not just to read out telemetry. So here we go. Let's go back to the logic switch into there. 
Now, instead of actually moving the physical switch to trigger the logic switch, we'll use the output from the app. So we clear that out, come down here, user applications, and there we are, the short press. Say OK to that, clear that out. Same one again. OK. Uh, at the moment it's on, so a short press should switch it off. There we are. You'll notice that both inputs are off. Uh, the app will only output an on signal for a very short time, but that's all it needs to toggle the app. So if I press the button now, you'll notice A will change to a tick for a very brief time, but that's enough to change the output state. And then control two, again, they'll change to a tick for a very short time, but that's enough to change the output state. There we are. And you might have noticed the delay between me pressing it and doing it. And that's just because the app has to wait to see if I'm going to do two short presses. It sees that I'm not, then it can change the output state. So that's what I mentioned about the delay. Uh, so we can say okay to that. So our timer is going to be quite happy with that. What about the reset? Well, the reset switch can now be that long pause one. So we go into here, down to our user apps, and set it to the long press. Say OK to that. Now let's have a look at the timer. So a short press should start the timer running. Another short press should stop it. Did you notice the slight delay again because of the app? And a long press will reset it back to zero. There we go. So press to run. If I do a long press now, it will, whilst the timer is running, reset it back to zero, but leave the timer running. Because, remember, the app has not given the short press output function. It's only given the long press output function. So if I give a long press now, it'll jump back to zero, but carry on counting up again. There we go. So a short one to stop it, and another long one to reset it. And there you go. Job done, as long as you can run um, the, this Lua app. And uh, I'm guessing that Neil wanted to use this in flight, perhaps to time something. So if you're busy watching the model, can you be absolutely sure that you've got your timer started, that you've stopped it, or maybe you want to reset it in flight? You'd like to know. Well, we can get voice confirmation of that. Uh, we just need to go to the Sounds On event, The first switch will be, um, now, this will have to be the output from the logic switch, not from the app. Because remember, the app's just sending out on a short press a single on ping. And it does that both for off and on. So we take the logic switch output, say OK to that. The file will be timer started. Because when the logic switch output goes on, we're nearly there, timer started. When the logic switch goes on, it will read that out. Timer started. There we go. So how do we get it to read out when the logic switch goes off? Well, just do the same thing, but we'll reverse it. So plus logic switch one. But very importantly, this time we reverse it. Say OK to that. And now we can go to... Dum -de -dum -de -dum. We'll get there eventually. Timer stopped. So at the moment, the timer is running. And if I was to ping the switch, it'll stop the timer. And because this switch is reversed now... Timer stopped. Lovely. And finally, now this time we need to use the output from the app to tell you that it's reset. So when you get the long press reset,
Okay, I'll start the timer and it will confirm it. Timer started. I'll stop the timer. Timer stopped. And I'll do a long press now. Timer reset. Timer started. And if I do a reset whilst it's running, it'll tell us I've reset it. It'll go back to zero, but carry on counting up again. Timer reset. There you go. Isn't that brilliant? So it is possible to do it.